Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to demonstrate how we can create a uh, kind of big curve at the top of a block element. So I noticed this over at the DuckDuckGo website, this uh, this curve, this large soft radius on this block element. I thought it's pretty nice and not that tough to do if we use a few basic CSS features. So let's see, I've got a blank page set up and basically I want to create a section in here. Now I'm going to start off simply by creating the curve shape and then we want to make sure we can apply this curve to other elements on our page. So I'm going to go ahead and create a div with a class called Big Curve. And this is going to be a visual element only. It's not meant to contain anything, so we definitely want to keep that div empty. Now up to the styles is where I want to start to manipulate this curve. And obviously we're going to have dot big curve as our main rule, as our selector, because it does have a class attribute on it. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and uh, visualize it. I'm going to give it a height of 50 pixels and I'm going to do an outline, two pixels solid red, just so we can see where this big curve shape is, or at least the outline of it. I'm going to do a position relative and yeah, I think that's pretty good for now. Now I'm putting that position relative on it because I'm going to be doing a pseudo element here in just a moment, but let's see what we have so far. Great. I can see where that red boxes right up there, that red outline. Here's where the real magic's gonna happen. Dot big curve colon colon after. We're gonna create a pseudo element. And when I start off with a pseudo element, uh, content, empty set of quotes to make it blank. And I also do display block just to lock it in and verify that it is a block element, but it naturally is a block element anyway, by the way. So this is gonna be an element that is basically a child of the big curve. And I wanna do things like uh, the width is gonna be 250%. So it's gonna be much wider than the actual container, right? Because my big curve container is technically 100% wide. So this is gonna be two and a half times as wide as that container. That's gonna allow us to do a much softer radius. So I have that big hit uh, width on there. And I'm going to set a height on here. It's going to be a pretty big height, 900 pixels. So we're creating a pretty large shape. Now we, we still can't see it because it doesn't have a background color or a border. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a background color. And I'll just put in the color coral just so we can see that. Let's see what's going on at the moment. Wow. So this big, large, coral, orangey shape, that is that element right there. Now what I'm going to do is head back up to my big curve parent and I'm going to put overflow hidden. I don't want to see any of this pseudo element that goes beyond my 50 pixel boundary. And now you can see it just kind of fills up that space. Okay, that seems like a lot to get to just a background color. Well, now we can start to put on our border radius. Um, so I'll put a border radius and I'm going to uh, let's spell it properly and I'm going to do 50%, which is basically going to create a uh, circle shape. All right. Now you see it's starting all the way over there, but I want to be really specific about my positioning. I did a position relative on the big curve. This is going to be position absolute. Now when I position it absolutely, it's going to be from the left. 50% and that's going to kind of push it over, but not exactly. I'm also going to do a transform translate X negative 50%. And this is going to give me a nice centering of this curve shape right in here. Let's go ahead and get rid of that outline that was just there for short term visual. And we can see, ah, great, we've got that curve. Well, that's exactly what we want. However, we're not just going to have this curve out in space. Um, instead, we're going to have it in something. So I'm going to pretend I'll go ahead and create a section here. And maybe it doesn't even matter what it is. I don't even need to give it a class. And we'll say this has some content. You know, it could be pictures, could be text, all kinds of stuff. But within this section, I'm going to put in my div class equals big curve. 
So whenever I want to apply this curve to an element, all I need to do is put in this div class equals big curve. But let's make sure this is going to work for us. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create another rule here just for my section. Could be a section, could be an aside, could be an article, doesn't really matter. Section, and let's see, I'm going to give this thing a uh, margin top of 200 pixels just so I get it separated from all of that other stuff that it's nearby so that we can see that content. Let's see, font size 3M, color light gray. That'll help us visualize that text content in there. Now I'm going to do a position relative on this section. And once again, that's going to allow us to really position that big curve within the section because I want it to be on top of that section. And I'm going to make it nice and chunky too. How about a min height of 400 pixels? Let's see what's going on here. So there's my section right down here. I think this will help if my section, of course, has the same background color. There we go. All right, now, now let's get that curve placed. Now that curve that we want, that big curve, this is where I'm gonna change this out because now my section is position relative. I'm gonna change my big curve position to um, absolute. All right, that's cool. Yeah, let's just knock that overflow hidden down. I still want that. But now when I position this big curve, I'm gonna position it from the top, negative 50 pixels. Since the big curve is 50 pixels tall, I'm gonna position it negative 50 pixels of its parent, in this case, the section. And that's gonna put it on top of that particular element. And then I'll say I want it to be zero pixels from the left, that's fine. That'll position it over to the left of whatever element it is contained in. And I'm gonna set the width to be 100% so that it is wide as its parent container. So now that we've got that, we can see that that nice big curve is on top of that block element. Cool, that's exactly what I'm going for there. So I've got this big curve class, I've got the big curve pseudo element right there. And of course, this just happens to be a section, but it could be all kinds of things. In fact, I could have other sections. It could be an article. And if that becomes an article, then of course my articles would have those particular characteristics and we'll see everything is still looking good. And before I leave you, control shift I, and I just wanted to point out that, yeah, we can resize this and the curve is still gonna look good. Now the curve radius might change a bit, but, um, but yeah, it's gonna look okay for our mobile visitors. And in fact, we'll do it this way. It's gonna look okay for our mobile visitors and for our widescreen visitors. Thanks for hanging out with me.